Oh, good. Good morning, guys. How's everyone doing today? Yeah. Awesome. I call this meeting of Lake Mary Toastmasters Club 6442 Order. Before we begin, please silence your cell phones. I would also ask for everyone to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Our club mission is to provide a supportive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communications and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. So with that said, I would like to invite our Toastmaster up here today, Ernest. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters, and we have a couple of guests. So we want to three guests. Well, that is very nice. Our theme today is Independence Day, and I address this a little bit later, but uh, we have to arrange our grammarian, our um, Technical table. Hattie is not here yet, so is, oh, is he coming? Oh, my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> um, Just leave that shit. <laughs> we need we need a grammarian. Uh, who would like to step up to the? Uh, who who does not right know? Paul. Paul, Paul, thank you very much. Paul. 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 Today is going to be a rich program, not an austere program. Austerity. Austerity is the word of the day. Grammarian is not yet here, so we don't have it. Oh, is, that's the reason. Okay, I'm sorry. Keep going. Austerity is the, the word of today. We are decorated for 4th of July, or Independence Day, rather. However, my theme, what it says, uh, Independence Day, actually addresses the Independence Day movie, which was a 1996 oh. American science fiction disaster film, co-written and directed by Roland Emmerich. In his epic adventure film, Independence Day, Strange phenomena surface around the globe. The skies ignite, terror racing through the world's major cities. As these extraordinary events unfold, it becomes increasingly clear that a force of incredible magnitudes had, has arrived. Its mission, total annihilation over the 4th of July weekend. The last hope to stop a destruction is an unlikely group of people united by fate and unimaginable circumstances. The film focuses on a desperate group of people who converge in the Nevada desert in the aftermath of a destructive alien attack, and along with the rest of human population, participate in a last chance counterattack on July 4th, the same day of our Independence Day. The film was scheduled for release on July 3rd, 1996, but due to its high level of anticipation, many theaters showing it on the evening of July 2nd, 1996. The same day, the story of the film actually begins. The film combined domestic and international box office goals was $817,400,000 which at the time was the second highest worldwide growth of, of all times. It currently is the 47th highest grossing film of all time and was at the forefront of a large scale disaster in science fiction resurgent in the mid 1990s. It received mixed to positive reviews upon release, which critics praise for its visual effects, scores, acting, but criticized its plot and character development. It won an Academy Award for visual effects and was also nominated for Best Sound Mixing. Independence Day Resurgent, the sequel is due for release on July 4th, 2016. 
Now I'm turning to our technical table, and I'm starting out with the uh, arc hounder, Dana Mitchell. Please explain your role. My job is to graciously count how many times someone may say words like ah, uh, or um, or you know, and to help them get better. <laughs> Our timer, Alexandra Balta, please explain your role. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. My function as a timer is to time the speakers, evaluators, and table topics participants to ensure they meet the timing requirements. Dear speakers, today, the severity of the time allowed. The severity of the severity of the time allowed is something to be in mind. The time is going to be uh, used as follow. Speakers uh, reach, you have five to seven minutes reach. Oh, right here, okay. Five, six, and seven. Samuel, Sam, 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 right here, okay? You have five to seven, five, six, and seven. Eugene, you have two to three minutes. It will be two, two and a half, and three. Evaluators, it's going to be three minutes. Two to three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. I will give my Stepping in as the grammarian, but uh, as you arrived, thank you very much. And please explain your role as grammarian. As grammarian, it's my function to select the word of the day, build members' vocabularies. Each member, when called upon to speak, is encouraged to use the word of the day. Other members may gently rap on the table when they hear a member use the word. In addition, I'll be listening for any errors in grammar, as well as excellent word selections. And I'll be noting any colorful thoughts or phrases members might use. During the evaluation meeting of the portion of the meeting, I'll present my report. The board of today is Austeria, which Abby brought along. Thank you very much. I'd like, I'd like to introduce our first speaker of the day which is Rich Massa. He'll be speaking from the Confident Communicator Manual number eight, lesson number eight. Get comfortable with visual aids. Select visual aids oh, that are appropriate for the message yeah. and the audience. Yeah. Use two or more visual aids to affect correctly with ease and confidence. The subject of his speech today is a moment on the lips. Five to seven minutes. Rich. Yeah. 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 on the lips. A lifetime on the lips. When I go like this, ladies and gentlemen, that means you participate with me. A moment on the lips, a lifetime on the hips. We're going to go over a few things today. We're going to go over the foods that people eat, how many calories are in them, and what exactly you have to do to burn those calories off. But I'm going to need a little bit of help. I'm going to need some help. From, I have a team with me, I have some people with me, you just don't see them right now. <laughs> We're going to educate you today. We're going to have fun today. Are you guys ready to have some fun? Yeah! Um, I have a special person behind the blackboard. I'm sorry, the, the tri erase board. He was my teacher in college. He taught me everything I know about food. So I want you to please help me welcome Professor Eat A Lot. <laughs> Come on. Oh, By a show of hands, how many of you 
you are eating a bagel or a pastry right now. <laughs> One bagel from Panera, I looked it up last night, is 350 to 400 calories. 350, a pastry is up to 400 calories. That's a moment on the lips, a lifetime on the lips. Food number two. <laughs> McDonald's French fries. Would well, anyone care to guess how many calories are in one large French fry from the largest fast food chain in the world? 750. Wrong. 1,000. 498 calories for one large french fry. Soak that in for a second. Food number three. Oh. Oreo cookies. You're, you hit my sauce, oh. <laughs> One serving of Oreo cookies are two cookies. And I mean double stuffed cookies. The good stuff. <laughs> That is 140 calories for two double stuffed cookies. And no one eats the cookies by themselves. We have to have a tall glass of milk. <laughs> now, I, again, I cannot do this by myself. I brought my trainer with me. He's going to tell you how to burn off these calories. Do you want, do you want to meet him? Yes. yes. Keep that going. Yes. Today, I'm Coach Brad Meathead. Let me spell that for you. That's Brad M E A T hyphen H E A T Brad Meathead. So, my job is to show you what you got to do to burn off these crap calories you're putting in your mouth. So, does anybody know what you got to do to burn off 400 calories? You have to run 90 minutes on a treadmill. Everybody get up right now. Stand up. I woke up this morning, wanted to chew some bubble gum and kick some butt, and I didn't have any bubble gum. Everybody run in place or move your arms for 10 seconds. Real fast, son. Real fast. 10, 9, Hey, okay, that's enough of that. If you notice by that little bit, your heart rate went up about five beats a minute. Sit down. <laughs> the next food is 498 calories of crap. You have to do, you might as well put those cards away. <laughs> you have to do burpees. Does anybody know what a burpee is? Yes, I Does anybody not know what a burpee is? Raise your hand. I'm going to show you. Count with me. One, one, two, one. two, two three. three. Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> you need to do one cup. 398 burpees oh, no. to burn off one large fry. And now to the Oreo cookies. Two Oreo cookies. Ladies, I want to warn you, if you have dress, if you have uh, nice shoes on, please take them off now. Because we're going to be doing some activity. To burn 140 calories, you have to do 14 minutes of jump rope. Everyone stand up. I want everybody to do 20 jumping jacks, full jumping jacks right now. Three, two, one, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Sit down. You would have to do something similar to that for 14 minutes. 
Again, a moment on the lips, a lifetime on the? Yes. yes. So I'm going to give it back to Rich. He's going to come out here and finish up this presentation. <laughs> Keep that applause going. Yeah, yeah. Thank you guys. In all seriousness, ladies and gentlemen, I've been a fitness expert for 11 years. 80% of health and wellness comes from what you put in your mouth. According to the National Center of Disease and Control, 68% of Americans are overweight or obese. According to cancer.org, one in four Americans have or, have or are projected to get cancer. Now that I just depressed the heck out of you, I want you to really think about a person's body image. It's the little things that you do every day. According to like, uh, articles like Psychology Today, it's the foods that make you feel good of what you put in your mouth, and also about your body image. You want to wake up in the morning and feel good looking naked. Let's just be honest with ourselves. So I'm going to encourage you, watch what you're putting in your mouth. Get undressed and look naked. And I promise you, if you improve your diet, if you watch what you eat, I promise you, and you can write this down, that you're going to find a lot more fun things to do with your lips. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, give me one minute, please. I'm going to get some water. Time. <laughs> How many calories do you have? Thank you very much. I think austerity in many ways would help to improve the health of many people in this country. In fact, uh, when I walk in the Walgreens or wherever, my people wearing out their organs. That's the only other way I can explain it. Uh, anyways, speaker number two, unfortunately, I don't have a subject. I don't know what he's speaking about, but Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I would highly recommend, as members of Toastmasters, there's a certain amount of disciplines what we're learning here. Easy Speak is a way to communicate with us as to what is going on. It's very frustrating as a Toastmaster to try to get information from people and don't get updated. So I appreciate it. So our next speaker, please, Sam, if you can come over here. Come on. <laughs> appreciate it. Ooh. being called out in front of the yeah, class. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to make a few adjustments to my schedule. But first off, let me tell you a little bit of a story. My topic had to be on research. And it just so happened that I did a sermon last Thursday on Daniel chapter 5. And I would like to share with you a little bit of that. I want you to picture a massive party. Thousands of people coming in. All of which are senators, noblemen, people of high esteem, as well as your traditional dancers, all 900 of your wives, and everything else like that. Then all of a sudden, a giant hush comes across the room. <clears throat> Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, today I would like to tell you of the story of Belshazzar, as well as his advisor, Daniel. But before we get into them, let's talk about his predecessor, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was a great ruler, as well as a conqueror. And he conquered many, many nations. One of them 
being Jerusalem. And when he went in, he took all of the able young men and he took them as his advisors, one of which was Daniel. Now Nebuchadnezzar was also very troubled by dreams and visions, things that kept him up at night. And he had no idea how to handle them. So he made a decree, because he got fed up with all these wise men that he had brought on over and were doing them absolutely no good. If at least not one of them could translate the meaning of the dream, but they also had to tell him what the dream was, they would all be put to death. And of course, Daniel caught wind of this. So he went on knees and prayed to his God, and he said, Dear Lord, I don't feel like dying. Help me out here, as well as everybody else. And he was able to tell him the dream. And this happened again and again. Now fast forwarding back on over to Belshazzar. Belshazzar, he's having this grand old party, open bar to everybody, the wine was flowing, people were dancing, it was a great old time. And then he caught wind that his father had brought over some cups from the Jewish temples. And these were holy relics. And he's like, you know what, I'm basically the king of the world. Let's go ahead and have ourselves a drink. So he had one of his servants bring on over the cup. He took a toast. And he took a sip. And as soon as he did that, a hand, a human hand, started riding up against the wall. And he began to shiver with fear. And he almost fell over. And then he shouted, whoever can translate this to me will be named third ruler of the country, a purple robe, which is only given to royalty, and a gold chain placed around his neck. So all the magicians, sorcerers, and astrologers came, and none of them would be able to translate it. And then his wife heard this, and she was like, you know what? Okay. And I like to think of this on a little bit of a different translation than what you might read about in Daniel chapter 5. Oh, boo bear, did the big bad king get a boo boo? Did the big little spiny on the wall scare you? Man up! You have a party going on, you're embarrassing me. Get those big white pants on. And just because of this little episode, you owe me it. Five hours of notebook. Get ready. <laughs> Daniel comes on in, and he takes a little bit of a different approach than what everyone else did. See, he's sitting there, and he's like, all right, I don't know how to tell you this, King. See, your dad, whenever something would happen, he would have great austerity to the situation. He knew that the guy I was praying to had something over everyone else, because when he had these dreams, it was only through God that I was able to get the wisdom to translate it for him. When he threw my three buddies into the furnace, Rashak, Meshach, and Bendigo, some of you may be familiar with that story, they didn't burn up. And then somehow a fourth guy appeared. And yet your guards burned up, and you turned it up seven times harder than what you had previously. And then when he came back on over here, and you became prideful, God put you in your place. And you were basically turned into a beast for seven years. And he took all that, and he understood it. But you, Belshazzar, you have seen all this stuff that has happened, and yet you have not listened. So God is basically going to dethrone you. And unfortunately for you, at that time, would have meant death. And that night, someone else came in and killed him. And he became the next ruler. So what's the general moral of the story? Don't mess with God's teacup. <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs>
very much. Our next speaker is the Division D Governor at Toastmasters International and our newest member, yeah. Eugene Koslowski. And he's speaking from the Special Occasion Speech Manual. Number one, mastering the toast. Recognize the characteristics of a toast, present a toast, honoring an occasional person. His speech is for two to three minutes. This toast is for you. Eugene! Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, why are we here this morning? Can anybody tell me? Anybody? Don't work out. <laughs> exactly. We're out here to better ourselves. We're not on some austerity program. We could have slept in this morning, but we're not. We're out here. We're making ourselves better. <coughs> For those of you in this room that are making yourself better, are here to better yourself, this toast is for you. <laughs> those of you that take it behind yourself to prepare your speeches, to work tirelessly and effortlessly in sometimes fear because you're afraid to get up here and speak in front of others, this toast is for you. For those of you that want to improve your communication skills, for yourself and others around you, this toast is for you. For those of you that want to better your leadership skills for yourself and the others around you, this toast is for you. For those of you that participate in contests, either as a functionary or a contestant, and go through the effort to make a contest as good as you can, this toast is for you. Those of you that participate in making yourself better as far as increasing your critical thinking skills and making things better for yourself and others, this toast is for you. Those of you that participate in this President's Distinguished Club, yet again, President's Distinguished Lake Mary Club, this toast is for you. And that's a big deal. You see, people really don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And this toast is for you. So ladies and gentlemen, continue doing what you're doing. Make yourself better because you're doing it for yourself. Please continue. This toast is for you. Mr. Toastmaster. Great toast. Mrs. Timer, one minute, please. So much. Next part of our speaking uh, engagement is long-awaited table topics presented by our distinguished Toastmaster, Stephanie Burns. Practice your impromptu speaking skills. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. 
I almost forgot this was coming up. God, I'm hoping the speakers will talk long today. Let's see. Independence Day, the 4th of July. John Dickinson, a member of Congress, refused to sign the Declaration of Independence. You're also a member of Congress. Tell us, please, what your reason is for refusing to sign, Paul. <laughs> because I have great austerity. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Table Topics Master. And that sounds like a tough question for so early in the morning. But uh, first thing came to mind, I saw a friend on, actually I think it was Susanna, right, but she posted about the day before Independence Day that she celebrates Dependence Day and everything, all the great things we got from England. So I guess I'll just go with that. And my reason for not signing is we, I enjoyed a lot of things we got from England, so I wanted to keep it coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He was hoping for a reconciliation with him, and he was unwilling to cut the apron strings. Mm -hmm. You're right on point there. Uh, probably the most famous signature in this country, if not the world, was that of signer John Hancock. So much so that we're often told to put your John Hancock right there when you have to sign documents. Describe for us what your status symbol or memorable insignia would be. And why, Erica? Thank you, Table Topics Master. My signature is something that I get to practice in all my interior design projects. I witnessed yesterday a customer as they sat down, waited six months to move into their home. He sat down and turned to me and said, you did good, Erica. And I said, this is your space. This is a representation of you. But somehow, my John Hancock is incorporated into every space that I design, and it shows. And it's with great austerity that I work on every job. Thank you. of the nation's founding fathers and their concepts of those days, that there were no women around except for those that were sewing flags and what have you. What do you make of that? And what would you have done had you been on the scene to bring out women's representation? You hiding back there, guys? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Table Topic Master, fellow Toastmasters and guests, women make men complete. If I was present at that time, what I should have done, the flags that we honor for our independence, I we have to give the recognition to all of the women who put the stars together and the stripes and the hours that they spent agonizing. Even today, we need to recognize those women, those of us who become citizens by naturalization. When you show up or wherever your ceremony is being held, there are always these women who will present you with the flag as you become a U.S. citizen. So, my, my contribution to that would be recognize the women and give them a place that the independence of this nation is highly contributed to by women. Madam Table Topic Master. Lead us in singing your most patriotic song, Martinville. <laughs> Our 
nation's flag this weekend, I was also celebrating uh, Argentina's flag. As someone who's very passionate about soccer, <laughs> this was probably the most agonizing 4th of July ever as Argentina lost in the final to Chile, the host nation, in penalty kicks. So uh, I'll just do a little rendition of what we Argentines like to uh, sing during our soccer matches. Uh, this is going to be in Spanish. Vamos, vamos, Argentina. Vamos, vamos, a ganar. Este vara quilombera. I can't even do it, I'm so sad. <laughs> French national. Okay, let's get back to the United States. Anybody, anybody here, anybody know any patriotic American songs? In English, anybody. <laughs> yes. Who said yes? No, 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 that was him. <laughs> Give us one. Ah. All right. Give us two. There's actually a couple of different ones that come to mind. Um, for yeah, I know it's interesting. I've grown up with a lot of military within the family, and it was just something that we were always around. Let's see which one. Horsey, or what was it? Amber ways of grace, for purple mountains, majesty above the fruited plains. America, America, God shed his grace on me and crowned thy good with brotherhood from sea to Shining sea. No, I'm sorry you had to endure that record. Anybody else? Another quick one? You. Yeah. Yeah. You're a singer. Uh, I, I, if you start the song and I know the words, I can. But my pitch is usually very long. Are you ready for me? Come on up. <laughs> Thank you, Madame Pete Poppins Master. That's why she's a distinguished toastmaster. You just can pull it out of her head like this. And I'm sorry that Argentina lost. <laughs> Happy that the American much. women won. Yes. Hey. Imagine, imagine. I just can't imagine how we do it. And I don't want any goodies any, for that. But what women were treated many, many years ago in some countries today they still treated that way. Saudi Arabia, they could have the best soccer team in the world, but they can't participate. It makes no sense to me. Anyways, we have celebrated 4th of July, and that's why the flags are here. And uh, our independence, the American Independence Day is celebrated on the 4th, we all know that. However, actually, the legal separation of the 13 colonies in 1776 from Great Britain occurred on July the 2nd, 1776, when the Second Congress, Continental Congress, voted to approve a resolution of independence that had been proposed in June by Richard Henry Lee of Virginia, declaring the United States independent from Great Britain rule. After voting for independence, Congress turned its attention to the Declaration of Independence, a statement explaining this decision, which had been prepared by a committee of five, with Thomas Jefferson as its principal author. Congress debated and revised the wording of the Declaration, finally approving it on July the 4th. Therefore, this is our Independence Day. July the 2nd. They approved it July 2nd. They signed it July 4th. Yes. <laughs> this is from WikiLeaks, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> oh, okay, anyways. It now gives me, what is this here? This is a part of the telephone. Is it yeah. anywhere this room? Oh, it's my Bluetooth. Uh, it now 
half of the time for our general evaluation where we learn what we did good and not so good. And I'm asking Jorge Fugolas to come up here. Jorge. mentioned this is the educational portion of the meeting so we'll just go ahead and dive right into the evaluations first up we have Macarena Torres she'll be evaluating Rich, Rich Mossel's speech this morning okay. All right. from the Confident Communicator Manual number eight, which is get comfortable with visual aids. His job as a speaker is to present a speech that uses two or more visual aids, which he succeeded in. <laughs> the visual aids selected must be appropriate for the message and audience and be displayed correctly with ease and confidence. The speaker is to incorporate what he or she has learned in previous projects about purpose, organization, word usage, body language, and vocal variety. Rich, you nailed it. <laughs> you did an amazing job. You used visual aids, which were appropriate and visual for everybody to see. And each visual aid did help everybody understand. You used the board, you used vocal variety, you used costumes. And I really see you using this speech to help educate Middle schoolers, high schoolers, they would love this. They would absolutely love it. Were the visual aids clearly visible? Yes. Did the speaker use visual aids smoothly and confidently? Yes, you were very confident in your speech. You are obviously very knowledgeable in this area, so you portrayed that confidence very well. You used no notes. <laughs> you used no podium. You used costumes, it was just, it was fabulous. One suggestion when you, um, for the future, if you do see a cramped room, I love it how you use the audience and you incorporated them and you made them do jumping jacks. You made it, but in the future, if you do see a packed room like that, try calling for volunteers to make things a little bit more easier so it could be a little bit more humorous as well. Call for volunteers, see, hey, can I have a volunteer, can I have two volunteers, three volunteers, and bring them front and center, and have them volunteer in doing exercises, which uh, would help uh, with the use of space. Again, you used body language, which was amazing, and I loved how you used crap calories. <laughs> loved it. I laughed so hard. You did a wonderful job, you nailed the speech, you nailed the purpose of the speech, which was to educate, which was to inform. Wonderful job, great job. I'd love to see you do this speech for, for kids. They would absolutely- I didn't even rehearse it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Stephen Morgan, and he'll be evaluating Samuel Bailey's speech this morning. Imagine having to give a speech right after Rich <laughs> on an agenda that doesn't describe anything about what you're saying. <laughs> Samuel, you had the very fun challenge this morning of having to take on that particular position. But you took it with great grace and took on a very interesting project at the same time. This was supposed to be the Research Your Topic project from the Competent Communication Manual. The thing that immediately stepped forward that I would say could have helped a lot would have been to separate your introduction from your opening. And many times people conflate the two meanings, so let me get this part straight. The introduction is what you don't say, the person introducing you says. The opening is the beginning of your speech. Do you know where your speech began? Mm -hmm. Where did it begin? It began when I started talking uh, about it going through word. history. It began when you said, imagine being at a party. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. That was where your speech began. Those should have been your first words. Those were engaging. The parts that were describing what your speech was about and that it was going to be as you were reprising your sermon, the rest of it, should have had Ernst giving you that because that would have set the stage and then you get to start by going, I got your attention. That's where the difference is between the opening and introduction. That's what I'd say is where you can make a really great impact with those. Now, I would have to say, it was interesting listening to the stories and the rest of it, and I'm not familiar with them myself. I've heard some of the names before, and I'll, the dream interpretation is always very interesting, but it was also interesting listening to praying and dying and dancing and uh, <laughs> basically, and you know. <laughs> I'm not sure who your actual audience was. If you were going for my son's age, you probably would have been fine. If you're going for a bit of the older crowd, you probably they're probably going, huh? <laughs> so make sure you're choosing your language and your words appropriate to the target you're aiming for. And since I did not know exactly, I wasn't sure whether that was appropriate or not. I just happened to notice those things, so I put it down as well. In terms of this being the research your topic project, this was supposed to be about being able to pull in multiple resource materials, support materials as to what you were talking about. You only had one piece of material you were pulling from. You were pulling from the Bible for this. So there wasn't any other support material I could say you pulled in, used, or in any particular way. So that part on those questions, I could say, mm, didn't have anything more. You had your own interpretation. That was very effective and helpful and interesting. But a little bit different from the concept of what the research or topic was about. But don't worry about that part, because you always get credit, regardless of whether you meet the actual objectives of the project or not. You certainly had plenty of confidence. You were feeling that you were having a comfortable here up on stage is what I noticed here. Your, your sincerity always comes forth very strongly. So you did a great job with all of that, and it'll be interesting to see how you're going to do this visual age project next. Don't try to match this. <laughs> do it your own way. <laughs> and next up we have Julia Kaufman, who is going to be evaluating Eugene Kowalski. <laughs> Toastmasters and our discipline, not with austerity necessarily, but with the discipline to be a part of Toastmasters, to really embrace it and grow with every member, here's to you. You repeated that, providing us information about what being a Toastmaster is all about. Very clever, well done. I loved how you did that. This toast is for you, for all of us. I also really enjoyed where you said it's not about, don't really care about how much you know until how much you care. How true is that? Once you realize that someone else cares about you, then you pretend to listen more. Rich's speech kind of captured that. You captured that about, it felt heartfelt. You really love Toastmasters and you really embraced this club. I remember you saying at a meeting recently about you always wanted to join Lake Mary Toastmasters. You were very impressed with that club. And knowing that and hearing you come up and present a toast to us made it that much more meaningful to me. I appreciate that. A suggestion in your, in your format, only one, you had great eye contact, clear, articulate. Minor suggestion about how you moved around the room. You were moving to include all of us. It felt slightly paced, pacing back and forth, so perhaps just lump, just nail it, sit, talk to this group, and then move with purpose as you give a toast. Or perhaps individual toast. A toast to you, Dana, for one of being our newest member as well. <laughs> a toast to you, Alexandra, for being a seasoned Toastmaster. That sort of thing. Loved it. Can't wait to hear your next speech. Thank you.
you do it? I was thinking to myself how tough that would be to do a two to three minute evaluation on a two to three minute speech project. <laughs> so as we dive in now to the technical table report, we're going to start out with our our counter first. So Dana Mitchell, please give us the report for our counter. <laughs> I did for everyone, but which ones am I supposed to just on the main speakers or everyone? No, everybody. 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 Wow. Okay. <laughs> Postmaster, just one sub. That's it. That's pretty good. <laughs> Rich, I was a little just well, was so excited I probably didn't count. So there was I really no. That purposely. I mean, there's one pause. There's one pause, and that was great. You know, uh, Sam Bailey, right. young man. Save there. my money. Not bad. One and and one pause. I'm good with that. You're good with that. That was great. Uh, Eugene, we just had like one tongue click kind of thing. I wouldn't say it was a tongue click, it was something. But and one pause. Great. Stephanie, nothing. It was brilliant. Awesome. The singing was incredible. It was, seriously. It was, wasn't it? I thought her voice was very good. <laughs> Ah, oh, Jorge, nothing for you. That was good. <laughs> Macarena, just to us. No, no problem. Stephen, uh, one pause. Julie, one pause. Paul, one so. And Gus, one ah. Uh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's the first time serving as functionary? Absolutely. Awesome. Good job. Next up, we have the timer report from Alexander Baldo. Thank you, Master Evaluator. Due to the austerity of the time allowed, some of our Toastmasters went over time, but others did very well. Rich, he was allowed between five to seven minutes. He went eight minutes and 21 seconds. Sam, he was allowed five to seven minutes. He was four minutes and 55 seconds. Eugene, you were allowed two to three minutes. You used two minutes and 23 seconds. Table topics, Paul, 36 seconds. Erica, 38 seconds. Gus, 56 seconds. Martin, 36 seconds. Sam, 54 seconds. And for our evaluators, Mac, she was allowed three minutes. She used two minutes and 45 seconds. Stephen allowed three minutes. He used three minutes and nine seconds. And Julia, she was allowed three minutes. She used two minutes and 23 seconds. Thank wow. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Hadi with our grammarian report. So I'm definitely rusty as grammarian. <laughs> I just realized I forgot to count a lot of the people who use the word austerity. <laughs> so if I forgot your name, I apologize and please let me know. Uh, here's who I did catch using the word Ernst, Stephanie, Erica, Eugene, Alex, and Stephen, I wasn't sure if you used it or not. Okay. Did anyone else use it? Oh, yeah. And Sam? I okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 if you haven't used it, uh, oh, please pay up to the treasurer. 25 cents. Um, in terms of colorful words or phrases, a moment on the lips, a lifetime on the hips. I've actually never heard that before. <laughs> so uh, definitely very memorable, and I like the use of repetition there. How about the double entendre? Never mind. <laughs> Um, You're picking up what I'm throwing down. <laughs> Don't mess with God's tea <laughs> gum. Uh, one thing, Sam, so whenever you said he took over, you were referring, I think, to maybe Daniel ruling. So just make, I'm, I'm not sure who you're referring to, but whenever you say he or she, just make sure it's clear who exactly you're referring to. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, Names are good. Yeah. I'm studying for the GMAT, so all this stuff's in my head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eugene, I really like the repetition of this toast is for you. I really liked it. It was very sincere. Um, uh, Ernst, so it's uh, did well instead of did good. Did well. Um, 
Gus, if ever you say, if I were, you would then say uh, what I would have done instead of what I should have done. So word goes with what you would. You're supposed to say what I would have done, yeah. not what I should have done. What I would have done. Yeah. And uh, Stephen, I like the use of the word conflate. Maka, uh, so whenever you, whenever you, so you said visual aids were, uh, you said visual aids which were appropriate, so it should be visual aids that were appropriate. If you're referring to something specific, use the word that, use which normally for extra information. That you want to add. Um, and I really like the use of the word fabulous because I never heard that word. All right, but that's my report. Nice. Right. So he is officially the designated teacher. Wow. That's what I would have said if I had been the standard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here more to the learning, get everybody feedback. Now, as far as general evaluations go, we, we did start on time. I, I think I would just, I like all the decorations here. It's very patriotic. Who doesn't like a theme about the United States of America? It actually reminded me of this posting I saw of what happens when you Google the most patriotic image in the world. It's actually a, a picture of George Washington with a bazooka riding a bald eagle Amen. with the American flag. <laughs> <in the background. laughs> I don't know why that jumped. Bumped, jumped into my head. Uh, I would echo some of what Ernst said just about responding to easy speak. Uh, gives the Toastmaster a lot of information so that we can get the agenda all filled out. And just my kind of editorial comment, I'm not a huge fan of, of the room set up this week. I, I, I think it's a little cumbersome and hard to get to the seats. I, I more prefer it when we're, we're facing that way. But I know we, it's a continuous experiment, so we'll try. That's just my two cents on, on the room set up, but it was set up on time and, and everybody was able to, to get seated eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, I would like to introduce our, our new club president, Julia Coffin. No, three dollars. Three tickets. Three right, dollars. So why don't we go through our business section, pay, pay earns, and we'll see what our kitty is at the end of the meeting. That money helps us with our club and, and grow and continue to grow. We had, wow, all I can say is wow, what an awesome meeting. Three great speeches. Rich, you started us out on a high note, baby. Thank you very much. I just can't wait to go exercise. <laughs> I, uh, we, uh, we have a full house, which is great to see. I've noticed over the years that we have these peaks and valleys, and it tends to be when spring break, our attendance kind of goes down. Everybody's like done, looking forward to you know a little vacation. Now we're seeing the up uphill where we have great attendance. So keep it coming. Come come back every meeting, and let's continue to grow strong. We have four guests in the room. Tony, tell us what you think of the meeting. You're, you're here again. What did you think this time around? seeing you guys again. Um, great use of the grammar. We were joking over here that you should be that permanent position because you did a yeah. great job critiquing everyone. <laughs> yep. um, I had to redeem myself for coming late. <laughs> <laughs> um, I loved your speech too. You um, used your expressions really well. I loved all the different costumes. We started off on a high note. I've never seen a speech like that, so it engaged me right away. <laughs> it's going to be hard to top that one. <laughs> Set the bar really high. Um, I just enjoyed the meeting and I'm looking forward to coming and see you guys again. Thank you. Right, well, welcome back. again.
Did you go around? Oh, Got it. Did he, did he not see the shit? Let me go through and just holler out if you can fill a roll. So next week is the 14th. We have Sergeant at Arms Macadena because Sam's on vacation. We don't have an opening for Toastmaster. Who could be Toastmaster? He did know who's doing the rest. Bridge. All right, okay. We have speakers Alexandra, Dana. Oh. Is icebreaker? No. No, he did Two. icebreaker. Wait a minute. Someone used my John Hancock? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know who it was. All right. Erica for third speaker. We have, uh, who's this? Jorge for more table topics, Ernst for general evaluator. We have openings for evaluators, all three. Carrie is the awe counter. Hadi, your grammarian again, thank you. And we need a uh, timer. So we have openings for evaluators, timer, and a toastmaster. Timer. Timer, Stephanie. Evaluators? Paul, Martin. I'll take here. one. Gus? I'll be out of town. We need a Toastmaster. Toastmaster? Rich. Rich Toastmaster? I'll be Toastmaster. Yeah, Rich. Yeah, something yeah. Like that. Oh, that'd be interesting. <laughs> we have two more openings for evaluators. Any takers? Mm -hmm. All right, Stephen, I've got you down for an evaluator. We need one more. Any takers? All right, well, we'll leave it open then um, to fill in to speak. Make sure to go into the easy speak and confirm your roles. I wanted to mention a couple of dates on 11, July 11th, which is this Saturday's Toastmasters training. All the officers are required to go. All Toastmasters are welcome to go. There are makeup sessions. When is that? It's Saturday. Saturday coming. We have an officers meeting tonight at 6 o'clock here, so we can talk about that. There is makeup training, but um, I know that I think half of the, the officers are planning to go as well. On uh, July 17th, the winner of District 84 speech contest will be speaking in Sanford at the Seminole Toasters Club at 11.30 on Friday. He's preparing to be in the competition for the International Speech Contest, which is, where is it? At? The semifinals would be the next level, and that's going to be, where are they? Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Yeah. If you want to hear some his speech, which was phenomenal, is why he won. Mark your calendar for 11th, July 17th, Friday, 11.30. More details to come. We'll send out the flyer. And I think that's about it. I'm happy to be your president. Look forward to trying to fill the shoes for Erica. And 50-50. Do we have any? All right, we got some money. We have $5. I mean, we have $10. So All right, $5. So, uh, you can pull the number, okay? You can pull one up, one uh, ticket. Okay, read it up, see what the number is. We all hear it. It's going to be Gus, you want to vote, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, big winner, Gus. Oh, what's the number? <laughs> The German. No? No? I have four zeros. Oh, never mind. I do have it. Oh. 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 Hey, you got to give me that money. Okay, here we go. Thanks for the rest. And one more announcement. I'd like to bring Dana up to the, the lectern real uh, sure. quick. Dana did his icebreaker, it and dollars? it's the most important speech that you'll ever give in Toastmasters. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you very much.